Hi guys, I'm Andrea and today I'm going to be doing the Shithole Country Tag, which was created by Diana in Color in response to President Trump's disgusting comments, like not surprising honestly, about countries like Haiti, El Salvador, and Africa in general since he can't. I'm pretty sure he can't actually name an African country. I was tied by by Jenna from Bibliophilth and Priscilla from Bucky Sharp. So thanks you guys for thinking of me and tagging me in this tag. I just have a lot of emotions, feelings, and I'm disappointed. Am I surprised at this point? No, but I believe that talking about it and having a discussion is super important because when you don't, you tend to maybe normalize this behavior and it becomes compliant and it becomes a new normal and I don't think it should be. Anyways, I think this was in response or the context for this was TPS. So a lot of countries that are under TPS right now have or are going to have their status terminated in the next year or this year. To put it into, I guess, metaphorical terms. You're not sending these people to a mansion. You're not sending these people back home. You're sending these people back to a burning building. These People are going back to countries that are still in so much turmoil and it could literally be a matter of life and death. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> so because of that, um, I'm gonna, I try to narrow this list down to TPS countries and then I narrowed that down to TPS countries that are getting their uh, designation status revoked this year and next year. So those countries are Haiti, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Sudan. First book I want to talk about is The Translator by Leila Avilila. I think I said that name wrong, but she's a Sudanese author and her book is about a Muslim Sudanese woman who lives in Scotland. And she is a university Arabic translator and after the death of her husband, she begins to fall in love with a white man at her University. He's a professor and it's a romance story. I don't really read romance So I think it'll be interesting to check it out because it's not something I really read and it's not something that I I'm constantly seeking So it'll be cool to actually check it out. This book is called War Child, a Child Soldier's Story by Emmanuel Jaw And this is a story or it is a memoir about his life So Emmanuel grew up in a small Sudanese village and then at the age of seven he was kind of forced to change his entire life. His dad kind of became this high-ranking official in the army and he was forced to become a child soldier and he was separated from his mother who he later found out was killed so he was orphaned at a very early age and he escaped, he was able to escape but that escape didn't come without tragedy so he had to endure a lot of things in a very short span of time and at a very early age and this is a story of how he survived that and he became a very successful person but this tragedy kind of helped lead him to music which he found was his true passion in life and how it led him to become a rapper and how he was able to survive all of that he actually released a documentary in 2008 and it was premiered at the Berlin Film Festival and it won an award at the Tribeca Film Festival as well so I'm very interested to see how his journey happened in this book. The next book I want to talk about is called Corazon by Jessica Salgado. Now Jessica, I was introduced to her work through my friend and she is a Salvadorian based, a Salvadorian American LA based poet. So Jessica is popular through her song poetry. A lot of her poetry is on YouTube and one of the first poets, poems I heard of hers was this one right here which I'll probably be inserting somewhere here. Men yell welfare at mommy when they see us. I am Latina. I like reading. I like writing. This is funny to other Latinos because time is meant for more important things like cooking or cleaning or helping mommy because she works hard for us. I was immediately drawn to her. She's so magnetic. Her presence, her writing has a very certain soul. She speaks about such a universal experience that a lot of immigrant kids or immigrants themselves have faced in the US, especially Latinos, and I feel that she's a very important voice and a new voice to our community that needs to be heard more. The next book I want to talk about is Miguel Marmol by Roque Dalton, and this is a Salvadorian book. Roque Dalton is a Salvador was a Salvadorian writer in the 70s, and Miguel Marmol is a true story. It's a testimonial about a man, Miguel, who was revolutionary in the early 20th century in El Salvador. It's a testimonial on life as a working class peasant 
in El Salvador and it interweaves the workers movement and kind of this rise of a socialism in Central America. And Miguel was a survivor of La Matanza, which was a massacre that happened in 1932 in El Salvador. So La Matanza was a massacre ordered by the dictator government at the time to kill anybody who was sympathetic to the peasants' cause and to the workers' movement. So in one week, about 24,000 to 35,000 indigenous native people and poor people were killed in El Salvador. Miguel also survived death by firing squad. He was one of the influential leaders of this movement, so he was able to survive. He was the only leader to survive this um, time in El Salvador, and he survived by hiding underneath the body, so he's in, definitely an interesting individual. And the writer, him, the writer of this testimonial himself is very interesting as well. Roque Dalton was also a socialist man, politically active man, and he was assassinated by the Salvadorian government in 1974, I believe. He, he was killed because of his views, so I'm very interested to read that as well. I want to mention very quickly Francisco Gavidia. Francisco was a Salvadorian poet and he was kind of very influential, but the thing with him is that he influenced and mentored another very popular Latin American poet, Ruben Dario. So Ruben Dario was considered the father of modernismo, which is the Spanish, or not Spanish, Latin American literary movement, and it was the first time kind of the people took the language back. I guess you can say that they weren't being influenced by European movements. This was an inherently and totally Latino, Latin American movement of the arts and this movement has basically influenced every other Latino or Spanish language or Latinx writer ever since. I mentioned Ruben Dario because I mentioned him to my parents. I asked them if they knew any Salvadorian writers and they couldn't think of any at the top of their head but they did mention Nicaraguan Ruben Dario who is one of my dad's favorite poets and they mentioned his poet um, Los Motivos del Lobo which translates to the motives of the wolf or the wolf's motives and I'll leave a link to that below. Uh, but this is a poem that talks about how animals kill to survive while humans kill for fun. He also wrote this very, very relevant still, and it's kind of sad how this is still relevant, a poem to Theodore Roosevelt. And I'm going to read a little bit of it, but I'll leave, have a, I'll leave a link to the full poem below. But um, this poem is called To Roosevelt, and he says, you think that life is fire, that progress is an eruption, that the future is whenever your bullet strikes. No. I just thought that was fucking amazing. Ruben is considered the father of this movement in Latin America, but, with, but none of his work, none of anything that he's done would have been possible without the help of Francisco Gavidia. And I'm tried, I've tried to look for some Francisco Gaviva, uh, Gavidia, sorry poems that have been translated into English in a way that the poetry of it, the prose is still intact, but I haven't really found any, so I don't know if anybody's heard of him, but if you have, please tell me. <laughs> Another book I want to mention is this one. It's called Full of Heart, My Story of Survival, Strength, and Spirit by J.R. Martinez. Now, you might recognize J.R. Martinez. He was on Guess of the Stars, and he's been on a bunch of TV shows like General Hospital or ER, one of those two. One of those. So when he was 19, he was a soldier in the Iraq war and as a result of a roadside bomb, one third of his body was completely burned and his face was disfigured as well. And this is a story of him, his life and how he kind of rose from that and became a very successful person. He didn't let that dark time in his life destroy him, but rather it motivated him to aim for higher things. Um, JR is of Salvadoran descent. His mother is Salvadorian, she grew up in El Salvador, and he doesn't know who his father was. So I think it, I thought I'd just include him because this is a voice of the community. I don't think we really hear often. We don't hear about um, Latino soldiers enough. So I just want to give honorable mention to this book, which is The Faraway Brothers, Two Young Migrants, and the Making of an American Life by Lauren Markham. I don't want to include this in my main list, but it's a book I definitely want to read. That's why I checked it out from the library. I'm always a little bit wary when uh, reporters or journalists follow stories because it could be exploitative or it's like ethics, boundaries, and morality and all that kind of brave stuff that could be, you know, mishandled. But this is a story of two brothers, Ernesto and Raul Flores, and they're both from El Salvador and they have to leave El Salvador 
at the age of 17 because of violence and they're forced to make the journey to the states and it lauren kind of follows them on their journey and this is a real story it's very 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 recent i think the i was skimming this book and the ending talks about trump and election night and what they felt so i'm actually really excited to read this another book by a nicaraguan author that i want to read is called infinity in the palm of her hand a novel of adam and eve by gioconda belli i think i said that right she is a nicaraguan writer and she divides her time between the u.s and nicaragua but this is a story it's kind of a retelling of the story of adam and eve very interested i've always been interested in biblical stories for some reason and this just seems like my type of tea the next book i want to talk about is moon bath by yannick lahens and she's a haitian author and this story is a multi-generational story and it goes from the great grandmother to the grandmother to the mother to the daughter i think of women and they live in this village in haiti and this is a story about a curse basically it deals with deals of the devil and spirits and gods and all that kind of stuff so i'm very interested to see where this goes it also deals with power and oppression and dirty politics and political turmoil so i'm very interested to see the combination of these two things in a novel the other book i want to talk about is american street by evie Zoboy. i hope i'm saying her name right but she is a haitian author this is a story of a girl named fabula and after leaving haiti and arriving to the u.s her mother is detained by ice at the airport and deported back to haiti so she's on her own in a new country with family members she doesn't really know so it's a story about how she navigates in this entirely new world she is not familiar with i picked this book up because it's about immigration and it's about immigration in a different manner than what I usually read. I usually read about Latino immigration. I think it's important to hear from different perspectives and different voices about the immigration experience and how broken our system is in the US. So I'm very excited to check this book out too. So yeah, those are just some books that I picked up and researched. I'm really, really looking forward to reading all these books. And yeah, that's my video. If you like this video, please leave a comment. And thanks for watching. Bye.